Welcome to an APH Access Academy. Today is part five of five in this series, Come Back to Me Braille. Our title is Navigation of Braille Certification. And before we dive right in there, we have a special guest coming to talk to you. Let's see. Mike, hi. Hi there. I'm Mike Hudson. I'm coming to you live from the Museum of the American Printing House for the Blind here in Louisville. We are in our tactile writing exhibit. Uh, your, your subject today is Braille certification, so we're going to have a Braille certification story. There's this lady, Eve, um, Ethel Angle. She was born in Cleveland. She moved to with her family to Tempe, Arizona when she was a kid. Went to Berkeley, and in 1921, she met her husband, Philip. In the 1930s, she joins a Red Cross class in Berkeley to learn Braille translation. From about World War I onward, uh, uh, the Red Cross for a while was in charge of certifying Braille. So the first thing that e. Ethel had to do was she had to get her Braille transcribing manual from the Red Cross. And uh, it's full of lessons on uh, uh, learning Braille and her uh, uh, manual here is filled with all kinds of notes that she has written throughout the manual to herself because the two parts to becoming certified in the 1930s where you had to pass the written test, that's where the manual came in, and then you had to create a 50-page Braille test manuscript. So uh, APH, although you, you can buy a, a Braille writing equipment from APH now, back in the 1930s, we had only just started getting into that business. So you had to go to the Perkins School. So we have here in this collection, the price list from the Perkins Institute for their appliances. And Ethel bought herself a model 13 desk slate, slate and stylus. Braille writers were pretty hard to get a hold of, pretty expensive back then. So most of these volunteer Braille transcribers did their initial drafts on a slate and stylus, like this one, a Model 13. And here we have Ethel's manuscript, 50 pages. I'm not sure my lighting is really good to show you the relief on it so you can see the Braille, but this is Louisa May Alcott's Flower Fables from 1855. It didn't really matter what you transcribed. It wasn't intended to be a project that a uh, kid who was blind or visually impaired or adult would, would need to use. It was just something that you would grab uh, so you could prove to the uh, people who were grading the test that you had a full and complete understanding of the Braille code and its applications. Now, if you like to hear more stories like this, we have our social media active, our Facebook and our Twitter. And the address is at APH Museum. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Mike. And now we are going to highlight our educators, Kyle and Dawn. I'm turning it over to you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Kyle DeJute, and you're not going to hear as much of my voice during this webinar as you might during other webinars because we have some sort of guest speakers, but my title at the American Printing House for the Blind is Braille Trainer. There's a picture of me up on the screen. I've got short brown hair and I'm a very smiley young white woman. And my name is Dawn Edens. Um, my official title at APH is Digital Textbook File Developer. And I am also a Caucasian woman. Um, and there is a picture of me, it's showing me having long blondish um, hair with a bright smile. And these are some active programs that we're gonna discuss today. Um, we are gonna discuss literary braille proofreading, music braille transcribing, UEB technical, braille formats, and of course, literary braille transcribing. Kyle, what is the correct order of study when we're studying these courses? That is a really understandable and common question. There is no one correct order of Braille study. There's just no one right way to do your Braille journey. 
we each learn what we need, maybe what our student needs, and we learn the material and in the way that works for us. In addition to the active programs we're talking about today, which are in many ways geared toward uh, a transcribing journey, more than a reading journey, there are, of course, more resources. There are other courses and certifications from individual schools, including universities. There's programs from Hadley, there's UEB Online, Perkins has a number of courses, and so on. And why should we focus on these? So we're focusing on these particular programs uh, and exams because they lead to the most widely recognized Braille endorsements in the US. So these are sort of national level programs. And we're doing that because we wanna help you make an informed decision about where to go on your Braille journey and what it might mean to engage with one of these Braille study courses. And it's time for our first poll. So poll number one, after literary Braille transcribing, what certification should all US transcribers try to earn next? Would it be A, literary Braille proofreading, B, Braille formats, C, any certification, D, Nemeth code, or E, music Braille transcribing? We have some participants that are slowly putting their answers into the chat. Um, again, after literary Braille transcribing, what certification should all US transcribers try to earn next? I'll go ahead and close it down and share out results. And Kyle and Dawn, 37% said any certification. But all the rest, there were others that were really close uh, behind literary Braille proofreading at 25%, Braille formats, Nemeth code at 21%. Thank you, Amy. And yes, that is correct. It is any certification. So depending on your needs um, or your child's needs, you would go to any certification that you think you would need to go to next. It's totally your own path. so that you can make an informed decision about that path, about navigating that path towards certification. Let's start talking about, or maybe let someone else talk about specific Braille programs. First up, UEB Technical. Darlene Bogart from CNIB was kind enough to give us a few words about this certification. So we're gonna hear those now. Hello, my name is Darlene Bogart and I'm the CNIB National Braille Convener. It's a volunteer position which I've had for several years and I'm pleased to be here today to talk about the UEB technical course which CNIB offers. Because UEB doesn't deal with format and deals with the codes that include everything except music, we kind of felt at first that we really didn't need a technical course per se such as the Nemeth course is. But after uh, experience, we decided that transcribers really did need some guidance and some opportunity for practice to do UEB technical. And so um, we did the simplest uh, way that we could in a short period of time to meet that need. So the course is offered free by CNIB on the website. You can download it in print or in Braille. And uh, it has uh, 14 lessons. They mirror what is in uh, the guidelines for technical uh, material. And uh, there's one page of questions for you to braille, and then the next page are the answers. So it's up to you to mark your own work. It's also up to you to look at the guidelines and the rules for UEB to find the answers this isn't an, it isn't an instruction case, uh, course at all. There's no manual or anything like that. It's up to you to find where the answers are. And so that has two purposes. It gives you the opportunity to really get to know that document where you can find everything. And so that's 
one of the prime reasons. And then the other thing, of course, is the experience and the the examples cover everything that's in the guidelines. So then after you finish that, we had a, a test and you could get a letter of proficiency. It's not a certification in the sense of that we don't give a certificate. The only certificates we give in Canada are transcriber and music. Everything else is a letter of proficiency. Um, and so that's what we're doing here with that. And so the, uh, the exam covers the whole thing as well. It's the same kind of an exam. You get um, questions and then you have to braille them. The format is not an issue in the, in the test at all. Because once again, format isn't addressed by UEB. And so different organizations do their own thing as we've seen many, many times. So uh, the, um, we found that the test actually, uh, those who try it do fairly well, but we also found that uh, we probably should give a, a pretest. And so we instituted that a few years ago and you can do the pretest and up until right now, actually, we've been doing it for free and sending back the report to those people who would like it. And we, we just can't keep that up anymore. So we have rolled the pretest into the test package and there's a charge for that, depending on whether you're um, uh, certified in uh, Canada through our program or whether you have a recognized uh, certification somewhere else like in the United States, and we do that, we have a reciprocal certification with Library of Congress, so that works just fine. Costs more money from the States than it does from Canada to do this package, but we send it out. Costs a lot more money for us to send it to the United States than it does to Canada, and so that's what some of the, the reasoning is behind the difference in the prices. So um, the practice test uh, has been very helpful, and the results as a result of having that practice test are very much better than they were before. So it seems that it helps to see how it should be done, give you a little bit more practice. And so that's where we're going. Now we're, we're revising it slightly, just, well, we're looking at to make sure that we've covered all the changes that were made uh, to the, um, the UEB section three rules, the uh, signs of, um, operation and comparison. And so that's it. Our thanks to Darlene Bogart for sharing that information about the UEB technical course from CNIB. Here's a brief summary of information about that course that will be part of the handout once that's created. I noticed a question in the chat, is the test timed? The UEB technical test is set up so that when you receive the envelope with the actual test print in it, you communicate with CNIB when you start the exam, and then you have two weeks to complete the exam before you have to have mailed out your completed transcription of the UEB technical exam. So it's two weeks from the time that you started. And now we're gonna talk about literary braille proofreading. And these are some words from Allison O'Day um, and she is a literary braille proofreading course for NLS. She is a grader there. My name is uh, Allison O'Day and I am a grader for the Library of Congress transcribing course, the UEB transcribing course, and I also uh, proofread and grade some of the proofreading course, UEB proofreading course lessons. So I, I would like to talk to you today a, a little bit about the course, and I'm going to read a statement that um, is sent out with uh, lesson or exercise one of the proofreading course. Proofreading Braille requires a very high standard of accuracy and students enrolled in the proofreading course are expected to begin with a high level of braille knowledge and skill. This course 
is not intended to assist a student to refresh or brush up on Braille skills, but rather to help the student learn to provide useful and complete information to the transcriber about errors needing correction in a transcription. And I think that is a perfect summary of what the proofreading course is. It's designed to assist uh, the students in um, maybe locating and citing errors and creating a useful and um, maybe kind of a politically correct, uh, encouraging proofreading report to any transcriber. <clears throat> the proofreading course consists of, <clears throat> excuse me, six lessons. Uh, I actually, they're called exercises in the in the proofreading course, but it consists of six exercises, and um, the uh, five of the six exercises, students will prepare a page in line report of the errors found in the transcri transcription, providing UEB code references uh, for contraction, braille indicator, and format errors. So. Um, Students who are enrolled in the proofreading course should have a very good uh, knowledge, working knowledge of contraction rules. And when a proofreading report is prepared, um, this is true for all um, proofreading, you always cite the rules from the code book, not from the instruction manual. So if you were proofreading a Nemeth transcription, you would cite uh, the rules from the Nemeth code, not from the instruction manual. So that, that is true for the proofreading course. So it is good to have a good working knowledge of the UEB code book. Um, and of those eligible for the proofreading course include um, blind and sighted uh, transcribers. And one of the requirements for the course is that you need to have completed successfully all 19 lessons of the UEB transcribing course. You do not necessarily need to have submitted a manuscript for certification, um, but uh, you certainly can, and many students uh, do submit their manuscript for certification and are certified transcribers, and then they go on to the proofreading course, but you do not necessarily need to uh, have submitted a manuscript. You just have to successfully complete all 19 lessons of the course. Um, once you sign up, you will be assigned to a, uh, an instructor from, um, from the NFB. And, um, and students will be given uh, two opportunities to prepare an acceptable proofreading uh, report exercise. So um, you have, I think for the UEB uh, course, you have three opportunities to submit a lesson. But with the proofreading course, it's assumed that you have a good uh, understanding of the rules of contraction and formatting and uh, Braille sign usage. So you we will be given two opportunities uh, to submit an acceptable exercise. And if after the second one, uh, if the second one is not accepted, you will uh, have to withdraw from the course and then start at a later date. So, and um, just like the UEB transcribing course, you have 90 days uh, between lesson submissions. Um, the final exercise consists of a two uh, braille volume transcription Students will need to successfully identify the errors in the transcription and will receive certification after successful uh, completion of the final exercise. So that, like I said, there's six exercises. Um, all of them have intentional errors that need to be identified. Um, one of the exercises you will be preparing a, um, the preliminary pages from um, a, a two volume text um, that's exercise for the course, but the other five exercises you be, will be preparing a page in line report of the errors. I think it's a very well rounded course and, and when you 
you've, you've completed your exercises, uh, you'll be a, a very good proofreader and uh, will be able to, um, to prepare proofreading reports that are uh, useful and meaningful to the transcribers that you're working with. Thank you, Allison. That was very useful information. And next on the screen is just a summary again of the handouts that tell you um, basically what this course entails. And now it's time for our next poll. So this is poll number two. And which of the following is true of CNIB course for UEB technical? A, a greater mentor will be assigned to you upon registration. B, you never submit any lesson or pretest for evaluation. Or C, it is largely self-directed without any tutor or mentor assigned by CNIB. a great question to ask, which is true of the CNIB course, UEB Technical. People are thinking about considering what they think the answer is. And I will go ahead and share out with you that the majority of our friends today, 70% said it is largely self-directed without any tutor or mentor assigned by CNIB. Yay, gold star for everybody. That is correct. It is largely self-directed without any tutor or mentor assigned by CNIB. Let's talk next about the music braille transcribing course and certification from NLS, which is administered by NFB. And Kathleen Cantrell was kind enough to share some, a blurb of information about the Music Braille course. Hi, my name is Kathleen Cantrell. I'm the chair of the Music Committee of the National Braille Association, and I'd love to tell you a bit about the certification process for Music Braille. Six months after your literary certification is completed, you may request to enroll in the Music Braille course. There's a small questionnaire asking about your music background now, while having a strong music background is not a specific requirement of the course, I'll be perfectly honest and say that it is a huge help if you are fluent or at the very least familiar with reading print music. There have been transcribers go through the course without any previous musical knowledge, but it does take an extra step to first learn how to read print music in order to know how to transcribe it into Braille. Once you're accepted into the course, you will be sent the textbook Introduction to Music Braille Transcription by Mary Turner de Garmo. This text was revised in 2005. However, we've had many code changes since then. In 2015, the Music Braille Code was updated, and in 2016, UEB was adopted and the new formats guidelines were published. Due to these quite major changes, the de Garmo textbook is currently being revised again. Karen Gerald is one of the lead editors on the project, and fortuitously, she's also the person who grades all of the music course assignments and the one who officially certifies our music transcribers. She has been sending the revised chapters in their beta versions to students enrolled in the course. As with the literary certification course, you complete a lesson in your own time, email it to Karen, and she responds within a week or two with corrections and comments. Midway through the course, once you learn how to transcribe single line music, which is music for a single instrument, such as violin or trumpet, and vocal music, which would be solo songs or single lines from a choral piece, you will be eligible for an associate certification. You may stop at this point and be certified for transcribing just this kind of music, or you may continue with the course, learning how to transcribe music for keyboard instruments, orchestra, full score, full score choral music, and thus obtain the full music certification. The final exam is chosen by Karen and consists of an entire piece of music, usually a work for piano, for you to transcribe fully. Music braille transcribers are few and far between and are always in demand. If you're interested in joining our ranks, you are most welcome, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. 
Our thanks to Kathleen for sharing that insight to NLS's Music Braille transcribing course and certification. Up on the screen currently is a summary of a second summary of information about that Music Braille transcribing course, including a link to the web page on NFB's website with information about that Music Braille course. Let's talk about, in general, exam resources. When you're taking one of these exams, where can you look? What can you use? The answer is you can look at anything while you're working on an exam. What you can't do is ask a question of anyone while you're working on an exam. The process of working on a certification exam is a test of your ability to understand the material and or find ways to understand the material. So sometimes we get locked into a narrow mindset that while you're taking a Braille certification exam, you can only look at the lesson book that led to that exam. And that's simply not true. You can look at the lesson book, of course, it's even better if you look at the primary sources, our base codes for whatever exam you're taking. And you can also look at questions that have been published online and already answered. You can look at workshops, you can go through other trainings in order to help you better understand those primary resources and apply them while you're taking the exam. Now, just like Darlene Bogart said earlier, when we cite primary source that when we cite something or we say this is why I did something, our code books are our main resource for that. And for all of the codes, that, all of the courses that we've talked about so far today, the rules of UEB is our uh, foundational primary source for the UEB technical course and for uh, at least the, the text surrounding music Music Braille is an additional Braille code, which would be our other primary source in the Music Braille course. All right, so I, I, there are a couple of questions that I, I think we can go ahead and answer now. The prerequisites for courses here are all on the individual websites. The prerequisite for the Music Braille course is US citizenship. Canada has a separate certification process for Music Braille, and I'm not sure what Music Braille certification looks like outside of North America. The CNIB UEB technical course, you can, anyone can take, uh, anyone can go through the material and there is already provision for Canadians and uh, US residents, people who are certified in those countries to take that exam. The Literary Braille proofreading course is another NFB course where US citizenship is one of the prerequisites for enrolling in the course. All right, let's soldier on. And now we're gonna talk about Braille formats certification. And these are a few words from Cindy Laurent and she is the current president of NBA. Hello everyone, I'm um, Cindy Laurent. I'm the current president of the National Braille Association and I'm here to talk to you today about the um, NBA formats exam and what it entails. The exam um, has existed in some form or another for I wanna say eight or 10 years now. Um, it was upgraded to the 2016 version of Braille formats um, a couple years ago, I think in like 2018 we released that. So uh, what it basically entails is that you would um, start out by going to the National Braille website, which is nationalbraille.org. And under what we do, there's a tab that says Braille formats. You click on that and there is information about the um, exam, what it entails, what's required. In order to take the certification exam, you must be certified already in literary Braille. Um, that certification can come either from NLS, the National Library Service, or CNIB in Canada, the Canadian version of the NLS. Certification, um, either of those is acceptable, but you do need to be certified in that before you can attempt the formats exam. The application online is available and easy to fill out. There is a $175 fee for the exam that covers everything that you would need. Um, there aren't any additional fees anywhere along the line. Once you request an exam, 
and receive it. You get eight weeks to complete it. The exam itself consists of a mini book, which is, uh, I want to say maybe, I think it's like 15 pages of print that you turn into uh, Braille and you have to format it accordingly. And there are directions that come with the exam that tell you exactly what we expect and desire as the um, requester for this material. We have requester you know, requirements or guidelines, and those are spelled out in the directions. Um, and then you have eight weeks to Braille it and check it and proofread it and check it again and proofread it again. Um, in the directions, it'll tell you that while we don't read everything word for word, if we do find um, Braille mistakes, either uh, errors in UEB rule, you know, following the contractions or whatever, there are points deducted for that because at the end of this, you receive a certification that says you can transcribe textbooks in a in an appropriate and effective way. And so that includes the basic Braille. Um, again, we don't read it word for word, so we don't necessarily catch every little error, but if we do catch them, those are considered mistakes. Um, every exam is reviewed by two certified formats um, graders. So it's never just one person's opinion of how you did. It's always two. And if the two graders don't agree on something, then that goes out to the committee, which consists of eight or 10 people who look at things. So we try very hard to be sure that um, just because it's not the way I would do it, it does follow formats, guidelines, or requirements. And that's really what you're being graded on is what the formats book says. Um, it's very important that you don't bring in any of your agency requirements to the Braille formats mm -hmm. test because we don't know what those are and are not familiar with those. And what we're grading is your knowledge of the Braille formats book guidelines rules. So it's important that you really look everything up and um, make sure that it follows what format says, regardless of what your agency or you personally might do in every other transcription that you do. There is a study guide that's also available at the National Braille Association, um, and it can help you walk through and see what kinds of materials might be on the test. Um, there is a fee for that as well, but um, all of that is available at nationalbraille.org. Um, the graders will not know who you are. Every test that comes to a grader comes as a number. And that way there are no personal biases of any form in there because we have no idea uh, where the tests come from or who they're associated with or what your level of skills or knowledge are or you know if I really like you or I really don't like you like none of that matters. So the tests are very uh, we try very hard to make sure that the graders have no knowledge of that information. So um, the national office takes care of all that and that's been helpful. If you have any questions about the tests. Um, we are always happy to answer questions. You can uh, contact the national office and they'll forward those to the appropriate person. But um, be sure that you're ready and up on the formats guidelines before you take the test and don't assume that you know, because a lot of us who've been braiding a long time um, have things that it's like, oh, golly, I forgot that that got changed or whatever. And for this test, it's very important that you look everything up. So I hope you do it. It's um, I think it's a great uh, skill and a thing to have a great um, accolade to add to your resume of having the formats exam. So let me know if you have any questions. And thanks Cindy and Lauren for those words of information regarding the Braille formats certification. And um, up on the screen now is just part of your handouts again. It's just a second summary of the Braille formats certification from MBA. And now it's time for our third poll of the day. Um, and this one is poll number three, true or false. When taking a certification exam, a transcriber can only look at the lesson book and code book related to that specific certification. Would that be A, true or B, false? people are thinking about it and putting their answers, dropping it in when taking a certification exam, a transcriber can only look at the lesson book and code book related to that certification. And sharing out 88% Kyle and Don said false. Yay, that is correct. It is false. You can look at any lesson book or code book 
doesn't have to be related to that specific certification to help you find your answer in researching. All right, I've seen a couple of questions about this one. I'm excited to talk about math, braille, proofreading, and transcribing. So English Braille American Edition or eBay. The current mathematics braille transcribing course and exam from NLS are based in EBAE and Nemeth code. The mathematics braille proofreading course and exam from NLS are currently based in EBAE with Nemeth code. So the currently active math certifications from NLS as administered by NFB are based in EBAE. That's how they're teaching Nemeth. Let's talk about UEB with Nemeth. There is available from NFB's website, the provisional revised Nemeth course manual. It is waiting in the wings until an updated Nemeth code is finalized before this revised Nemeth course manual, which teaches UEB with Nemeth, becomes the active path to certification. Now, Lindy Walton was kind enough to share a significant amount of information about this UEB with Nemeth course. Hi, my name is Lindy Walton and I am the main collaborator of the lesson manual for learning Braille mathematics using UEB with Nemeth. First, I'd like to tell you how this book came to be. I had been preparing materials using the Nemeth code and EBAE for 15 years when word of a new literary code started to emerge. Rumors were spreading that the Nemeth Code might become obsolete. The Nemeth Code had proven its worth as the official Braille code for the transcription of mathematics in North America for over 50 years. I was among many who were relieved when the Braille Authority of North America recognized its importance and supported its continued use. However, when UEB became the official literary braille code in the United States in 2016, the Nemeth Code community was left with little guidance. The UEB rulebook allows for the use of the Nemeth Code within UEB text, but the examples given in section 14.6 are sparse. As a result, a Nemeth Code think tank developed much through the efforts of the National Braille Association, whose mission is to offer continuing education to those who prepare Braille materials. Through a series of workshops and lectures, a document called the Guidance for Transcription Using the Nemeth Code Within UEB Context became available. The guidance is a short paper that has been helpful to seasoned Nemeth transcribers who are being asked to produce materials with UEB as the base code. But with no lesson manual, the training of new Nemeth transcribers was suffering. I saw the need and wanted to help. The NFB was gracious enough to trust me to write a lesson manual for UEB transcribers learning the Nemeth code. I was privileged to be able to collaborate with Barbara Taffet, one of the authors of the original EBAE Nemeth Manual. We modeled the new introduction to Braille mathematics using Nemeth code by following the topic outline of the original book. One significant change is that spatial arrangements are introduced much earlier in Lesson 10. The manual the lesson manual goes into extensive detail because its intended audience is transcribers learning the Nemeth code. But it is my hope that this book can also be a useful resource for teachers and support staff. It consists of 18 lessons and four appendices. It is subtitled Provisional Online Edition because it is a work in progress the lessons cannot be completely verified until the revised Nemeth code is approved and published. Topics which have not yet been finalized by the ban on Nemeth committee are clearly marked and provisional examples are given. 
We often get asked why there is no certification for UEB with Nemeth. Certification cannot be offered until there is an official Nemeth code. Although the course book is available only from the NFB, you do not register for this course and you are not assigned a grader or a mentor. There is no certification exam either. Instead, each lesson includes several practice exercises. The answers are given at the end of the lesson, making it easy for students to mark their progress. Reading practices for each lesson are also available in an appendix. The lesson manual will not be in its final form until the revised Nemeth code is approved and published, but it has been available as a free download from the NFB since 2017. It is offered in BRF or PDF format. Since it has not been produced with formal publishing software, it is not in accessible format at this time. Because it is a work in progress, there is a link on the website for you to report errors or to make suggestions for improvement. I am looking forward to the adoption and publication of the revised edition of the Nemeth Code that will allow us to begin further work developing the lesson book into a path to certification by adding exercises to be turned in for grading and by offering a certification exam. I thank you for your interest in the Nemeth Code. And our thanks to Lindy for that information and for all of her work on that UEB with Nemeth course that will eventually become go live. On the screen again are some summary information about that course will, which will go live after the updated Nemeth code is finalized. And now we're gonna talk about literary braille transcribing. And these are a few words from Elizabeth Symington. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Symington. I'm a Caucasian woman with short brown hair. And behind me, I have a Jackson Pollock action painting. It's a five by seven tablecloth. I put it on the lawn and just flung paint on it. Some blue, some white, splashes of purple. So I had a plan, a vision of where I was going, Combine that with my skills, and then in the end, it all came together, and I was proud of myself. So that is my analogy for the NLS course. It is an adventure. And it's also a choose-your-own-adventure, which I will get back to in just a minute. So the Literary Braille Transcribing course is the prerequisite for the other Braille certificates. So this is the place to start. Uh, the course will cover the Braille alphabet, how to write in shorthand, essentially, Braille is in shorthand, and then how to format. So there are 20 lessons, and then the final test is a manuscript. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Symington. I'm a Caucasian Choose Your Own Adventure, which I will get back to in just a minute. So the Literary Braille Transcribing course is the prerequisite for the other Braille certificates. So this is the place to start. Uh, the course will cover the Braille alphabet, how to write in shorthand, essentially, Braille is in shorthand, and then how to format. So there are 20 lessons, and then the final test is a manuscript. So the certificate does not expire, which is really nice, and it's also very good for employment. So this is a free correspondence course. You would prepare your homework, either on the computer or with a Braille typewriter, which is called a Braille writer, and you would send it into your grader. They would proof it and send it back to you. Um, so you would sign up on the website, on NFB's website, and from there you can download the homework. Um, all the lessons are available in PDF or as a BRF. So like I mentioned before, this is a choose your own adventure. You can either have a NFB grader or a non-NFB grader. If you go with an NFB grader, you just sign up on the website, they will assign you a grader, you'll go through the homework, um, you'll send it in to them and you just go all the way through the course with them. Or the other option is to find someone who is already certified in UEB in the United States and they would be your grader up until the manuscript. And then you would contact the school, they would administer the final reading exam and you would submit your manuscript to the school. 
So let's talk about the manuscript. It's gonna be okay. It is a culmination of everything you've learned. Uh, you would pick a book, like an Agatha Christie murder mystery, and you are going to, trans to transcribe the first 35 braille pages. So you'll have a title page, the table of contents, and maybe part of the first chapter. Um, one thing that folks start to worry about is to where to get that embossed. There's actually a list of places that you can contact and have them emboss it for you. It's called the Directory of Producers of Accessible Material. So like I said before, this is a free course, so if you end up paying to have your manuscript embossed, that's a very minimal investment in your education. Um, so this is a test of your knowledge, so you're not allowed to ask for help on the manuscript, and it is challenging, so it's not uncommon to have to resubmit. So the next thing for you to do is to go to NFB's website and enroll. Thanks for those words um, from Elizabeth. And um, Kyle, I was just informed we're running a little bit short on time. Um, so we might have to skip a poll or two, Amy was saying. But next up on the screen, what you all are seeing right now is just another um, summary um, that is part of the handouts, giving you information regarding your literary braille um, certification. So the poll number four that we're gonna skip is when do we expect the course on transcribing UEB with Nemeth to become fully functional? Is that course going to become fully functional when the very last EBAE Nemeth book in existence is destroyed? No one knows when it can ever become functional. Or the UEB with Nemeth course will become functional after the updated Nemeth code is finalized or uh, specifically February 14th, 2022. The answer is the UEB with Nemeth course will become fully functional after the updated Nemeth code is finalized. Real quick, let's talk about cheat sheets. A quick philosophy, cheat sheets work best when they are yours specifically. That lets you refer to exactly what you need, where you need it. If you create your own cheat sheet, it is very much your own. It only has the material that you need in the format that you need it. So in doing this, you may want to use the APH Braille shadow font. This is available for free download from the Building on Patterns website, which is uh, Building on Patterns is an APH early literacy product under pre-K, under teacher, resources. Under the heading parent letters, there's a link where you can download the font here. So that's that lovely APH Braille shadow font, which has even been reviewed by APH's large type team. For a cheat sheet to make it your own, you can always modify existing cheat sheets as well to make them more yours by highlighting, trimming them, or editing them in some other way, rearranging either physically with the paper or in an electronic file. Here are some sources of cheat sheets. BANA's website under UEB resources has a list of cheat sheets that are arranged in various ways. The UEB study group, Google Drive, uh, you can get there from uebstudygroup.com, I believe, has a collection of reference sheets, which are essentially cheat sheets of all kinds. And of course, individual groups and individual people also make a lot of cheat sheets that can be shared with you. And I think we have time to do our last two polls. So this guy is true or false for poll number five. When preparing a manuscript for the NLS literary braille certification, is it against the rules to use braille transcription software? True or false? It is against the rules to use braille transcription software when preparing your manuscript for NLS literary braille transcribing. And now we'll go ahead. It, we have about 50% of our audience who have answered. I'll share out. And 70% have said that it's true, that it um, is against the rules to use Braille transcription software. 
it's actually very much within the rules of the NLS Literary Braille Transcribing course to use Braille transcription software from lesson 15 through the manuscript of the NLS Literary Transcribing course. We are encouraged to use Braille transcription software. This came about with the latest, the version of the instruction manual, and the expectation is in real life, we are often using Braille transcription software to produce Braille. And so the NLS Literary Braille Transcribing course now allows and even encourages us to use Braille transcription software for lessons 15 through 20. And lesson 20 is the certification manuscript. Hey, Kyle, I'm seeing quite a few questions. Do you think that maybe the last five minutes we can just do questions? Let's do it. Sorry. Okay. I think that's a great idea. And I appreciate that because there are quite a few. Yes. And with so many people that do attend our webinars, I just want to let you know that if we don't get an opportunity to get to your question, we do apologize. Sitting behind the scenes, there's lots of things that populate. So I am looking at just the collection that we have been um, going through. So backing up a little bit of a rewind, which specific code book would I use for NLS Literary Braille Proofreading course? The one I will need to cite, the UEB code book. Are you able to answer that? UEB, the rules of UEB and Braille formats 2016 are the primary sources which need to be cited in proofreading reports for the NLS Literary Braille Proofreading course. Okay. And so I'm also looking up there, they, they continue, forgive me, they continue to pop up a lot in the chat window while I'm also looking at what has previously been put in. If I live in the United States and get certified through CNIB, Will it be recognized in the United States? Yes. There is currently no US-based national certification for UEB for math science. And so the only available UEB math science certification is this one that comes from CNIB, which isn't technically a certification, but rather a letter of proficiency. But this is the only official exam that I know of to prove your proficiency in using UEB technical, and it is recognized both in Canada and the US. Great. I'm going to ask the attendee, Vicki, if you would be so kind as to restate your initial question in the chat window. We will address that before we get off. I have lost track of where your initial question is. I got While it. Were... I got it. Um, the question is, if there is no op is there an option for blind transcribers to get access to a cited, uh, a printed manual source material. All of the manuals that we've talked about today are available in both PDF and BRF form. I think she's looking for a source file to um, submit since e-files are not permitted. A source file to submit. For formatting. For formatting. Okay, so if you need to take the Braille formats exam and Correct. you are a um, and you are a, Braille, a, a visually impaired or blind transcriber, then I'm confident that the National Braille Association's national office can make specific arrangements with you. Another question is, what exactly does provisional mean? Um, is there a, a way to study while waiting for completed lessons? Yes, the UEB with Nemeth provisional revised Nemeth course manual is very studyable as it is. And the majority, the vast majority of the information in that course is not going to change. There are places in the manual where there's a little box that says something like pending BANA decision, and it's asterisked and, and bolded and says, the, to the best of our knowledge, this is what the rules are going to say. However, that is not yet written in stone. There are a few of those studded throughout the course materials, but the majority of the material in the provisional revised Nemeth course manual is ready to study. There's explanatory paragraphs and example braille transcriptions that you can, you can study and you can practice on your own. 
So one of our attendees um, indicated, I completed lesson 18 of the NFB certification course, but had to stop. It has been at least a year since I submitted that lesson. Would I have to start from lesson one again in order to pick back up? I assume this is a question about the literary braille transcribing course. And the technical answer is if you don't submit the next lesson in your process within 90 days, then uh, the expectation is that you would withdraw from the course or that you have withdrawn from the course. The assumption is if you don't submit within 90 days that you have withdrawn from the course. And so if you want to get back into it, you have to start from the beginning. My experience has been that this is the real world and we are real people who live in it and it is real people who administer that exam. So transcribers at nfb.org is the place to reach out and ask for clarification and specifically any grader that you had while you were in the course, reaching out to them and letting them know what your situation is and seeing how they can accommodate your situation to help you move forward without having to retrace all of your steps is what I would recommend. And what I will say is I'm going to, I have two last questions. We'll do that. Then what I will do is pause the recording, give the closing code, and we can continue answering a few questions that we have missed as well. But I just wanted to give you that heads up. Any idea of when the UEB Nemeth will be approved? I know that's always in our minds. Do you have any idea that you can indicate? I do. I certainly cannot say when exactly that updated Nemeth course is going to be published. What I can say is that um, as Dorothy Worthington said in the Jungle Books webinar that we did, the, um, the UEB, sorry, the Nemeth, the updated Nemeth code is largely finished and is currently moving toward a review process. So it is not my expectation that we are years away from an updated Nemeth code being published. And we know once that updated Nemeth code is published, the UEB with Nemeth course can become, can go live and can become the path to certification. I'm not going to say a specific date, but I hope to see an updated Nemeth code published I would personally in early 2022. I appreciate that. And I appreciate both you, uh, Kyle and Don for being with us, closing up this excellent series of Come Back to Me Braille is great information. And we just really appreciate your presentation and talent given to us today.